Hi guys, how are you? It's Sunday service. Happy Sunday service to everyone. My name is Lauren B. Welcome to the Untitled Tarot. So for those of you that are new here, Sunday service is a little bit different than what I normally do on the channel. Um, and I recognize that it's not gonna be everyone's jam. And if it's not your jam, it's totally okay. I do all of the Zodiac readings. I do monthly readings. I do spiritual development workshops. We do 50 shades of spirit work over here in the honeycomb. But Sundays are a little bit different. Sundays, we like to bring it back down to God. I always say that. When we enter a spiritual journey, when we enter a faith walk, right, um, we always do it in the pursuit of some kind of clarity to understand ourselves better, to understand creation better. How do we align ourselves to our divinity, to um, our desires, right? How do we heal? How do we grow? How do we embody like our potential fully? And I always think that somewhere along the way, we end up getting more confused than when we first started our faith walk. And I think part of that is because of the inundation of spiritual teachings, of healers, of leaders, of, of preachers, of blueprints, of plans, right? There's always like a like a 12 step program to your manifestation. There's always a course, there's always something going on. And I think that it can really distract us and it, I think it can really overcomplicate our process. And it was something that I was talking about in my thoughts from the trail video I had done a few weeks ago where eventually you end up in this kind of critical mass point where you're going, is it my shadow? Is it my ego? Is it my higher self? Am I in alignment? Like, and you're doing like this one, two step, like, oh, am I projecting? Like, it's, and it gets so confusing, it's so bogged down that you don't really understand. Like you can't find your ass from your elbow and it's just too much. <laughs> it's just too much for so many of us. Though I love on Sunday service, taking scripture kind of really analyzing it reading between the lines and see what like the the real simple truth what the simple solution is and i said it last week and i'll say it again that you know i'm very intuitive and so oftentimes like i have an idea of something that i think is really important to talk about but when it comes to sundays it's very important for me to kind of step outside myself step outside my pride my ego and like what i think is important to talk about and really see what god see what jesus this beautiful masterful ascended master has to say like what do you think people should be aware of what do you think we need to know what do you think we need to talk about right um and it's usually a little bit different than what i think we need to talk about so that you know it's always like a little bit of a humbling but it's always very much of a growth experience on sundays so what we do on Sunday service is I, you know, we kind of talk a little bit about collective themes or themes that are being brought to my attention to kind of bring to our attention. And then we pair them up with a gospel reading. I use the Word on Fire Bible. I, but I always say it's not a regular Bible. It's a cool Bible. This is by Bishop Barron. Um, this is not the entire Bible. This is just the gospel. The gospel is good news, right? The gospel is the new covenant between God and his people. And it's basically like, a uh, cathedral come to life is a little bit of what this gospel is. There's all of this beautiful artwork and it has all of these breakdowns about the symbolism behind the art from the artists themselves. There's contributions from bishops and pastors and historians, right? So it's really interactive. It's a very digestible form of the gospel. And so I personally really enjoy it. And I know a lot of you guys have reached out to me behind the scenes to let me know that you too have bought this version and it's been really helpful and insightful for you too. So I'm really glad about that. It's really exciting for us. So let's start with a prayer as we always do. And then we'll start breaking down like a few of the energies um, or a few of the themes that I've been noticing um, in like the spiritual community kind of across a variety of different platforms and then we'll start digging in to this passage that they led me to very good very good father god thank you for bringing me and everyone in for this sunday service i ask you to give me wisdom clarity and discernment to deliver any messages that you feel appropriate accurately at this time we love you we praise you we thank you always we give you all the glory and the honor for these messages to the utmost high in jesus name we pray amen amen y'all so I sat here yesterday and I was like, all right, Jesus, lay it on me. What do you want to talk about this week? And so I closed the book, I blind pulled a page and I ended up at Matthew. Mark's been coming up a lot lately, but we landed on Matthew this week, Matthew 1916. Now as just like a numerology nerd, that really stuck out to me, 1916, ones are beginnings, ones are the individual, um, nine and six, those are mirroring numbers, right? So I was like, ooh, okay, like, talk to me, Lord, like what are we going on here? And this is the story of the rich young man. 
Then someone came to him and said, Teacher, what good deed must I do to have eternal life? And he said to him, Why do you ask me what is good? There is only one who is good. If you wish to enter into life, keep the commandment, he said to him. Which ones? And Jesus said, You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness. Honor your mother and father also. You shall love your neighbors as yourself. The young man said to him, I have kept all of these. What do I still lack? And Jesus said to him, If you wish to be perfect, go sell your possessions. Give the money to the poor, to the poor and then you will have treasure in heaven. Then come follow me. When the young man heard this word, he went away grieving, for he had many possessions. Then Jesus said to his disciples, Truly, I tell you, it will be hard for a rich person to enter the kingdom of heaven. Again, I tell you, it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of the needle than for someone who is rich to enter the kingdom of heaven. When the disciples heard this, they looked greatly astounded and said, Then who can be saved? But Jesus looked at them and said, for mortals, it is impossible, but for God, all things are possible. Now, this is a really popular scripture, and I've seen a lot of different teachers, and I've seen a lot of different preachers really dissect this masterfully, but there was something more in here. There was something between the lines. There was something in not only what was said in this story, but also what was not said because on the surface level you look at that scripture and you go okay well you know if i want to be perfect if i if i want to find salvation if i want to come into manifestation like if i all right well i have to i have to be really good i have to keep every single commandment i have to stay in alignment i have to you know i have to be generous i have to give all of my stuff away but then you find the disciples at the end of the passage going but jesus but who can be saved like didn't you say that we were we were blessed abundantly, that we would be supplied by, you know, the 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 riches and glory of God in the storehouses of heaven? Like I thought we were supposed to be blessed. So I'm confused. So am I supposed to be blessed? Am I supposed to be poor? Like who these rules are kind of confused and Jesus is like, who is going to be saved? Like what what do you mean right here? And I thought it was so interesting because again going through like the spiritual journey going through a faith walk you see this inundation of of readers of healers of teachers um spiritual development courses um nine step programs this will align you to your manifestation like all of that stuff and it can get really confusing right and i think that spirituality as a whole is really popular right now which i actually think is a beautiful thing because there are so many topics or so many themes or so many perspectives and points of views that are being um really brought to the forefront for people who otherwise may not have ever known about them and explored those aspects of themselves and so i think it's so gorgeous but this one does bring to the point that you could get a bad teacher like you could get a bad preacher like you could get a bad teaching and it can totally throw you like a little bit of skew and it can overcomplicate what is already a complicated process and i think that that theme in and of itself is really being highlighted in this in this passage about how oftentimes there can be a lot of contradiction and that contradiction on top with the complexity of the human mind can make things much harder than they have to be right so if we look at passage 16 then someone came to him and said teacher what good deed must i do to have eternal life now take eternal life out and put in your manifestation how many times have you sat and you wondered what do i have to do like what good deed like do i have to do in order to get my manifestation in order to find the love of my life in order to find the best job in order to be blessed with more money like is it shadow work is it ancestor work like what is it do do i have to sow do i have to tie do do i have to give my money to the poor like what what do i have to do like and and we go through this whole step process right and it gets really really confusing and there are principles there are tools that you have in your toolbox that can absolutely help you but i think sometimes we can really run ourselves through the ringer doing that like what do i have to do i i can tell you that personally i have looked up at this guy and been like what do i have to do to get a freaking breakdown here like i don't understand like there's almost um 
a desperation in that right and then you have those moments where you go I did everything you told me to do like you know what I mean like I started a YouTube channel I'm trying to help people it's like I'm trying to pray it's like I'm I'm, I'm taking the courses I'm following the nine-step program I burned a bay leaf like I don't understand I use the mantra I use the affirmation I saw on TikTok I don't understand what's going on and it just derives you absolutely bananas to the point where it can really kind of um make the hope in your heart deferred right hope deferred makes the heart grow sick can almost become this desperate longing of trying to find like what's the right way to do it who do i have to do i have to ask an angel do i have to ask jesus do i have to ask loki like who do i have to ask like i don't understand and then where is it passage 17 and jesus said to him why do you ask me about what is good there is only one who is good if you wish to enter into life keep the commandments and which i feel like jesus is saying to him my guy, just keep it simple. Like, why are you asking me, like, what is good? Like, why are you asking me what the right way is? Like, keep it simple. Keep the commandments, right? Just don't hurt anyone. What Really, if you look at the commandments, what are they, right? It's like, don't steal from people. Don't hurt anyone. It's like, don't just be nice to people. Just, like, be you know, have some common decency, have a little empathy, have a little compassion, right? It's, it's nothing like really crazy if you because we think all oh, the 10 commandments, but it's really just like a basic blueprint for morality. It's like, do the best you can don't hurt anyone. Like it's it's really like pretty simple, right? But then you look at verse 20. And the young man said to him, I have kept all these, what do I still lack? And again, that's one of those moments that I think so often all of us, we go into and we go, I did everything you asked me to do. It's like, I didn't steal from anyone. I didn't cheat anyone. You know, I, I didn't steal my neighbor's goods. It's like, I didn't, you know, I honor my mother and father. I did my ancestor work. It's like, I did all the stuff in the blueprint. I did all the stuff that people on YouTube told me. I did all the stuff that, that the psychic coach planned out for me. Like I read the PDF, like I did it. Like what else am I missing? Like you're telling me to keep it simple. Okay, I followed all the basic steps and my manifestation still isn't here. Like, what am I missing? And then you go down to verse 21. And Jesus said to him, well, if you wish to be perfect, go sell all of your possessions and give the money to the poor and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come and follow me, which I thought was so interesting. If you wish to be perfect, whereas a few verses up, he already said, what do you ask? What is good? There is only one who is truly good. So when he goes down a few passages and tells him, well, if you wish to be perfect, it's almost like a sarcastic thing saying, you can't, you can't be perfect. You'll never be perfect. God is the only one who is really perfect. But if you want to be like that, if you want to be as perfect as you can, sure, go, go give all your stuff away. Go give, give it to the poor. Go do this thing. And I think that it really highlights how so often in a journey in the pursuit of happiness in the pursuit of a manifestation in the pursuit of something in following a bunch of different teachers and following blueprints and following steps and following affirmations and mantras and all this stuff which can again tools in your toolbox they can be useful but by desperately clinging to them what you end up doing is you just end up basically losing everything all of your possessions you end up losing aspects of yourself losing aspects of your own intuition that tell you um how to return back to center how to return back to um your equilibrium right in the pursuit of perfection i want a perfect life i want to be a perfect person right um I want to be this perfectly a lot. How many, raise your hand if you thought you were going to start your spiritual journey and you were going to be sitting cross-legged, just like meditating, floating up to the ceiling with a crystal in each hand, just like super namaste, getting up at 5 a.m., doing your morning yoga. And, you know, the reality of your spiritual journey more looked like you stomping down the street, stomping through the woods, just screaming into the void, just like, I don't understand. Like, make it make sense. Like maybe at some point like we all have those pit stops on like the the very like calm namaste like peace be with you and also with you like but so much of it is just this really like chaotic just expression of just like this scream into the void into the universe just like i don't understand this is so confusing right which is why jesus is trying to tell us to keep it simple right it's like in the pursuit of perfection in the pursuit of desperately clinging to all of these nine step manifestation programs that you end up losing yourself, 
right? In the pursuit of something that is unobtainable. And I think I said it last week in Sunday service that um, one of the last times I got Chinese food, I got a fortune cookie. Um, and I opened up the fortune cookie and it said, um, unrealistic expectations, like it just makes life harder. And I was like, wow, like I have a Capricorn North node, so that that really hit me in a soft in a soft spot, right? It's like when you have these unrealistic expectations about how your spiritual journey is supposed to go, what your manifestations are supposed to look like, or how you're supposed to be or walk your walk in comparison to how you see other people who feel as though they have it so much more together than you. You just end up hating yourself. You end up feeling bad about yourself and, and your manifestation, your desires, your hopes, your dreams, your promises, they're no closer to you right it's an incredibly frustrating process so i think it's kind of funny there's like a level of sarcasm here and jesus is like well if you want to be per well if you want more instructions well if you want another thing to put on your to-do list well then go sell all your stuff and it's really the idea but i think he's really saying it's like go sell all the possessions that you you got from everyone else go get rid of all the ideas Go get rid of all your blueprints, go get rid of your 12 step programs, go get rid of all the stuff that you just absorbed from other people who you think are going to get you what you want more than I do. Like, trust me, like I'm an ascended master. Trust me. I know God. Like we, we know how to, how to get you from point A to point B. Go get rid of all the stuff that you just absorbed from all these people, all these teachings, all these preachings, and just come spend a little time with me. Like I'll break it down for you. Like I'll keep, I'll make it simple for you. Does that make sense? Because then we go down to verse 23. Then Jesus said to his disciples, truly, I tell you, it will be hard for a rich person to enter the kingdom of heaven. Now, that verse really trips a lot of people up because you go, a rich person, but I, I thought I was supposed to be blessed and I thought I was supposed to be abundant. So if I do all of this stuff, I will be, I will be rich, like I will be abundant, like I will be well provided for, like I will look very blessed, but then I'm going to be blessed and then it's going to be hard for me to get into heaven. I don't understand. And really what's being highlighted here is the hyper fixation on material abundance, this hyper fixation on um, having a partner, this hyper fixation on being a perf being a perfect person right um and i think so often we will substitute someone else's guidance someone else's blueprint someone else's path for our own because again it may look like they have their life way more together than us they look financially blessed they look financially abundant however the scripture also tells us that the sun shines on the just and the unjust alike so and i've done it i've i've totally been guilty about this and i've looked at other people and i've gone I don't understand. Do you like them more than me? Jesus, do you like them more than me? Because I did everything that you told me to do. I kept all the commandments. I did all my shadow work. I talked to my ancestors. I'm so into the community. And then those people over there, they're not doing half of what I'm doing. And they look like they're having a way better time. So it's like, do you just like them more than me? Or am I doing something wrong? And I know I'm not the only one. Maybe I am. But I can't be. I can't be the only one that's like looked at someone else, right? And it's, a, it's an important point to make that one blessings financial abundance love partnership all of that stuff one that is not truly an indicator of um someone's morality of someone's character how they treat someone right it really isn't and so you know sometimes and they're bringing an example in my mind that sometimes you could be on like a really strict faith walk and then you can look at someone else who doesn't believe in anything and maybe they have a partner or they just got married or they just had kids and it seems like they're living the life that you want and meanwhile you're over here trying to like like really connect with the all you're trying to like pour into the community you're trying to help the collective you're trying to heal your generational wounds it's like how make it make sense jesus make it make sense it's so frustrating right it's like a bondage on your spirit like i i, I get it and so sometimes we can look at other people because we're fixating on the material abundance, on the on our manifestations, on our desires. And we look at them and wonder, what did they do right that I'm doing wrong? But it's important to remember that the sun shines on the just and the unjust. And it's also important to remember that you can't earn blessings. And so often we we work ourselves into the ground. We drive, our, or we drive ourselves crazy thinking that somehow if I do X, Y, and Z, if I keep all of these commandments, if I do this blueprint, if I follow these steps, I will be blessed. I will be abundant. My manifestations will come in, but they cannot be earned, right? Now, 
faith without works is dead. Same thing as you cannot use your feminine energy, right? To set an intention, to pull in guidance, um, to manifest whatever without following it up with that masculine energy, without putting something physical in there, right? A little bit of work, a little bit of something. It's, it's not like a, like a permission slip to just like sit around and like not do anything. Faith without works is dead. However, we can hyper fixate on the material abundance and see that as an indicator right of god being pleased with you or of you being blessed or of you doing a good job on your faith walk and it's not always so someone can be really blessed right someone can have a lot of stuff someone can have the things in their life that you want and it doesn't necessarily mean that they're walking in their divinity right? You don't necessarily know that. And it's also important to note that we don't know what goes on for people behind the scenes, right? So you may see someone that looks like they have a lot of stuff. It seems like they're living the life that you want, right? Um, but you may not know what it took for them to get there. You may not know all the tears that they cried behind the scenes that no one else got to see. You may not know the, the pain and the trauma that they had to traverse and overcome. You may not know the battles that they fight in their head, how hard their faith walk was, right? So it is easy to look at someone and go, wow, it's really easy for them. When really they might've fought many, many wars and gone through a very long wilderness to get to where they are, right? So again, we don't know all of the time and i don't think that in this scripture jesus is actually saying like you have to be like without a pot to piss in in order to enter heaven it's not but it also talks about an, like an abundant mind state right does that make sense now we go down to 25 with the disciples when the disciples heard this they were greatly astounded and said then who can be saved again it's that confusion it's like well Okay, well, if people have a lot of stuff, I would think that they'd be blessed, right? But maybe their soul isn't, like, proper. Like, maybe they're not good people. Like, maybe they're not walking in their divinity. Maybe they don't have a personal relationship with God. Like, okay, but then, okay, but then this guy over here, this young rich man, he kept all the commandments, but then he still has to give all of his stuff up, which means that he's still not perfect, and I'm confused. Am I supposed to be poor? Am I supposed to be abundant? You said I was going to be blessed. Like, I don't really understand, like, how do we get our manifestations? Like, how does one become blessed? Like, how does this work? And then we go down to 26. Right. But Jesus looked at them and said, for mortals, it is impossible. Which, again, I think is so much of Jesus going, you see how complicated this is? Like, you see how complicated you're making this? It's like all of the questions, all of the trying to quantify it, trying to find like this right alignment, the right balance, like you're confusing yourself. Like I told you like eight passages up, like just keep it simple, keep it simple. Like you're, you're really making this like so confusing. There is no right way or there's no wrong way to walk your faith walk, to be spiritual. Like, and there's no shortcut to being blessed. There, you know what I mean? Like, again, we all have tools, we all have wisdom, we all have knowledge. There's different things that work for different people. And I think that it's supposed to, right? Because we're not all the same. So not every technique is going to work the same for us. But there's no real shortcut into coming into manifestation. You could say all the affirmations that you want, right? But if you're not ready for it, it's not going to come in. Or what will come in is just another lesson that you need, right? And I also think that it brings up this idea of, not looking to other people for your blessings, for the answer to where you can receive a blessing because your blessing doesn't come from other people. Your blessings come from God. Your blessings come from the divine, from the all, from source, from spirit. Like however you relate to God, that's your personal relationship with it. But I think so often, again, we kind of desperately look to certain people to tell us like, how did you do it for yourself? Like, and that may not work for you, right? Again, give away your possessions, give away the idea that someone else is going to be able to tell you how to come into manifestation, how to come into your, into your desires, how someone else is going to be able to tell you how to walk a, a spiritual or a faith walk better than God can tell you, right? Give away those possessions. No one's going to be able to tell you better than your personal relationship with God is going to be able to tell you for yourself because you're different than them, right? Does that make sense? Now, something that really stuck out to me that was really interesting. Jesus listed some of the commandments in here. And what I thought was really interesting, and it almost felt like the most important thing of the passage, is not what was said. 
it's what wasn't said, what Jesus left out of here. So in verse 18, he starts lifting off the commandments when the young rich man asks him, um, what do you have to do to be good, right? And he says, well, keep the commandments, right? You shall not murder, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not steal, you shall not bear false witness, honor your mother and father, love your neighbor as yourself. And I sat here and I thought, why did he only list half of them? Which ones did he leave out? Why didn't, if he's, if he's telling him to keep the commandments and then he starts lifting off, listing off all the commandments, why didn't he list off all of them? Why did he only list off certain ones? And then I thought, which ones did he leave out? And maybe that's not something that would strike anyone else, but it struck me as curious because again, I know Jesus speaks in parables. I know Jesus speaks in hyperbole, right? Um, but a camel through the eye of the needle. That, that's hyperbole. You know, oftentimes Jesus spoke through um, like exagger exaggeration, right? To kind of emphasize and, and make a point. So, and everything he says because of that is very specific. It has a purpose. And what he doesn't say also has a purpose. And so I thought it was so curious that if he's going to list off the commandments, why would he not list them all off? And I thought, which ones didn't he list here which ones didn't he mention and i and i i found them out so he didn't list number one and number two the first and second commandment you shall have no other gods before me um and commandment number two which is you should not make false idols right and i thought that was really interesting because basically the gist of those is don't worship anything or anyone more than your creator again however you define that don't worship your manifestation more don't love your manifestation more than you love god interesting how often do we worship money i need this money i need this money i want this money i'm trying to manifest this money how often do we worship right we make idols we make gods out of a relationship out of status out of respect right wanting people to see you respect you gain a status for the work you do we idolize it we love it and sometimes we love it more than god and it was so interesting to me that he left those out and then he also left out commandment three and commandment four you shall not take god's name in vain and you shall keep the holy day now that's really interesting too because that's basically saying don't be mad at god don't be mad at the process when you are not spending any time with God. It's interesting, right? How often do we go and we pray or we talk to God when there is something bad happening? Or when there's something wrong going on, something scary, something we don't know how to get out of. But how often do we actually just sit and spend time with your creator, right? Right? And then oftentimes we don't do that. And then we get frustrated that the manifestation isn't coming in. Where's my blessing? Where's my breakthrough? Where's the next stage in my life, right? And you're worshiping it and you're idolizing it. And you're like, I want this thing. Where is this thing? You get frustrated. You get mad at God. You get mad at the process. You get mad at your spirit guides. Anyone who's been with me for a while knows that like I've had so many times where I've yelled at my spirit guides, you, you know. Um, but it's like an interesting thing. It's like, why are you mad? at the process, you're made at the universe, you're made at God, that your blessing's not here, your manifestation's not here. But meanwhile, you don't spend any time with us, right? It's like you only come like when you're mad at us or when you want something and we have no problem doing anything. But like this relationship's lacking a little bit of emotional intimacy, right? It's like, it's like kind of like when people say like God's not your ATM. And I think that it's an interesting statement because one, I do believe God is your protector and I believe that God is your provider. There have been times where I didn't have anything and I was just like, well, God will provide it. When I first quit my job as a bartender for a long time and when I, I got like the, the, the call, right? Like it's time to quit your job. It's time to invest yourself in this full time. Um, immediately after I did that, very much like the young rich man, uh, I, was, I was guided. I was told to give away all my money. And I didn't think, like, I've read this passage, but like, I didn't think that's going to happen to me. I was like, that's not going to happen to me. Like, they're not going to ask me to do that. Oh, yeah, they asked me to do that. They're like, give away all your money. I was like, excuse me? Like, I just quit my job. Like, I just, like, I have, like, a thousand subscribers. Like, this is this is already, like, a real, a real like, full moment. Like, just jumping off the cliff here. You want me to give away all my money? They're like, yeah. Give away your money, Lauren. I was like, 
all right. So I took all my money and, and I sewed it in a particular ministry that like I, I feel as though has helped me a lot and is good ground. Um, and, and what I realized in, in that moment was they, they weren't asking me to give away all my money to, to this this minister um, because I was becoming more pious or because I was becoming more righteous. What it was, it was an exercise in me believing that God was my provider. And I'll tell you something, within, I don't know, 12 hours, 24 hours of me doing that. And by the way, this is not an invitation for you to do that. <laughs> that's not what you're guided to do don't do that this was like a very specific instruction because something i needed to see i needed to become a witness of god's power um so don't just take that and run with it if that if that's not your portion right now and within 12 hours 24 hours i made double of what i gave away and it was again not about me becoming perfect it was not about me coming into manifestation it wasn't about any of that what it was is god trying to show me that he was my provider, that he was powerful, that he could do it, right? That I could not earn my blessings, that they just came from him because it was his goodness and glory to do so, right? And so I thought that that was so interesting. And I could have like given away all my money and been like, where's it going to come from next? Like, when am I going to get like the next, like, is someone going to book a reading? Like, is something going to happen? But I just sat back and I go, okay, your will, not my will. All right, I believe that you will do this. Like, I believe that you will provide for me. Like, okay, and I just hung out. I just hung out with God for like 12 hours, just like reading my book, just like hanging out, like having conversations back and forth. And within 12, 24 hours, like I had double the amount of money in my bank account that I had given away. And I became a witness to God's power that day, right? Um, and so again, like I think sometimes we worship our manifestations, we worship this breakthrough, and then we get frustrated when we don't see it. And then we forget that we actually haven't spent any quality time with God, right? It's just something like important to kind of note because honestly, those are blockages in manifestation. Anytime when like I needed something, I wanted something and I like idolized that thing, whether again, whether it was money or whether it was a person or whether it was some kind of status or respect I wanted to gain from other people, it did not come because I was idolizing it. I was making it more important than my soul. I was making it more important than my mental health, than my wellness. I was making it more important than my relationship with God. I was putting my desires in front of God, forgetting that my desires are answered because of God. And then the last commandment that Jesus did not mention was the 10th commandment, which is thou shall not covet, which is don't lust and don't be jealous and envious over what other people have. Thou shall not covet thy neighbor's wife. Thou shall not covet thy neighbor's goods. Don't look over at someone else and go, wow, like their business is really successful. Like I want that. Wow. Look at the partner they have. Like I want that. It's one thing to look at people and go, wow, that's inspiring. Like I'm really happy for you. And because I'm a witness to you, going through all that like then that means that could happen for me like that's inspiring like I'm gonna work a little harder today or like you know that that's something to kind of look up to that's great but don't envy it don't lust after it that it allows you to then almost be projecting like negative energy toward them not appreciating what you have in your life what this season is supposed to be teaching you right and then trying to absorb everything that they may be doing or everything that they may be teaching you so you can become just like them live the life just like they have when your life is supposed to look different and you are supposed to be different and your walk is intended on being different because you are a unique creation but i just thought it was so interesting like why would he leave those out why would he not yeah why would he not mention those commandments right not to like worship and idolize um your manifestations, money, partners, any of that stuff, right? Why would he mention like not to curse God, not to complain um, when you're not actually spending any quality time with God? You're not actually getting to know God. You're not spending um, those moments in like emotional and spiritual intimacy. Why would he not mention being jealous of other people's spiritual standing because it seems like they have an abundance of spiritual gifts? Why? Would he not mention not lusting after the fact that other people have relationships or other people have stability or houses or this? Or why would he not mention that? Because like for me, those seem like the most important, right? Like thou shall not murder. Duh. Like it's, you know what I mean? It's like thou shall not steal. Okay. Yeah. Well, like obviously like, duh. like why would he not mention those? Because those seem like way more important 
like tenants to like talk about and it's because I realized that the simplest and the most beneficial perspective is usually the one that's not discussed. It's not the one that's discussed on the local YouTube. It's not the one you're gonna find on TikTok. It's not the one that the popular spiritualists are gonna put on their Instagram story. You're not gonna find that lesson in a nine step course to get to your manifestation, are you? Probably not. And so it's so interesting that there is so much to be learned from what is not said. Again, reading between the lines. There's so many spiritual teachers. There's so many blueprints. There's so many courses. Everyone's throwing their hat in the ring. And I think there's something about that that's freaking awesome. But there's also something about peeping the inconsistency about the simplest, the most beneficial, and the most impactful guidance, not only to get you to your manifestations and your desires, but also for your mental health, for your well-being, for the, for the prosperity of your soul. What is it to gain the world and lose your soul in the process? to become a slave to material abundance, right? A victim to your alignment. We're not victims in Christ. We're not victims in God. We're victors. We're able to rise above that. And so we're able to look at a passage like this and we're able to notice what isn't being said, what isn't being discussed in popular spiritual social media and how that is going to benefit you. But in order to find that, you need to lean in you need to look a little deeper. You need to ask some questions. Think critically, right? And what I thought was really interesting in all the commandments that he listed, the last one that he lists goes, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. And I had to sit back for a second and I thought, and I went, wait a second, keep the commandments. And all the commandments he's list listing off are part of the 10 commandments, except for those, except for those five that I had just mentioned before. Love thy neighbor as yourself. That's not part of the Ten Commandments. It's a commandment, but it's not part of the Ten Commandments, right? And love thy neighbor as thyself falls under what many call the Great Commandment, which includes one, love the Lord with all your heart. And that is out of Deuteronomy, what is it? Six, four, six, four to six, five. Do not take vengeance nor bear a grudge against any of your people, but love thy neighbor as yourself. Leviticus 19.18. It's not in the Ten Commandments to love God above all things, right? Above money, above status, above respect, success, all of it. Love God, right? And love people. Love people as you love yourself. It's not in the blueprint. It's not in the Ten Commandments. It's not in the 10 step course, right? But it's the greatest of them all. It's the greatest commandment. It's the most important commandment. And Jesus talks about this in Matthew 22, when someone asks him, what's the most important commandment? He goes, love God above all things and love thy neighbor as thyself. The most important things are not in the blueprint. The most important things are not something that someone can teach you. Not even me, right? They are the simplest, but they are also the hardest to keep because they are the easiest to forget. Because they're so simple, they're easy to overlook. That the blockage to your desires and your manifestation is not that you're doing anything wrong. It's not that you're not in alignment. It's not any of that. It's because you love your manifestation. You care about your manifestation more than you care about your relationship with God. It's because you care about the manifestation more than you care about the wellness of your spirit. It's because maybe when you look at other people, you hold a grudge or you hold envy or you hold resentment, right? In your spirit against them. And love thy neighbor as thyself. It brings up an interesting question. How can you love your neighbor if you don't love yourself? And that brings us back to the very beginning of, of this Sunday service when we were talking about perfectionism. That if you are trying to be perfect and you are never, never able to obtain that level of perfection, then you will never really be able to love yourself. And anyone around you who may appear to be perfect, appear to be reaching this level of attainment that you are unable to grasp, you will grow to begrudge them. You will grow to resent them. You will be so hard on yourself and then it will encourage you to be hard 
on others and view them through a lens of judgment just as you view yourself. And because you're not spending that close, intimate time with God, because if you were, you would realize how amazing you are and how much you are loved, right? That you're not perfect and you're never going to be perfect and you're going to make mistakes and you're going to move a little crooked sometimes. You might speak out of your mouth in a way you shouldn't. Act a little out of pocket. But God will forgive you if you just say, you know what? I got a little out of character right there. And I'm sorry. And I, I, wanted, I would like to get back to center. And God says, great. Great. Come hang out. Come hang out. You build up that connection. You build up that intimacy. And then things just get a lot easier for you. I'm not going to lie to you. The past few months, I've been feeling like all kinds of crooked. I really have. And there have been some situations in my personal life that happened that like were really difficult for me and really stressful for me. And I had to realize that I was really idolizing like my goals. It's great to have goals. I'm an incredibly ambitious person. I, I will never deny that I am ambitious as the day is long. But I was idolizing it. I was obsessed over it. And I was really just not happy because the things that I wanted, the breakthroughs that I, was, I wanted weren't here, right? And I wasn't prioritizing my personal time with God. I wasn't prioritizing my relationship with Him. I wasn't spending quality time like I used to, right? times when things worked easier for me and things went smoother and and you know I felt more blessed and things were just working out and then they weren't working out and I didn't understand why it's because I got caught up in the world I did and I had to get out of the world and I had to get back into Christ I had to get back into God I had to look back at the best teachers that I actually could have and they're never teachers that come from this world right and when I did that God said, it's okay. Sometimes you make mistakes. Sometimes you move a little bit crooked, but you know what? Now you know, like now you know, you gained some wisdom, you gained some experience there, and that's gonna allow you to, to move more effectively in the future. And that's gonna allow you to help other people who may be going through a similar process, right? And then he also brought to my attention, he goes, by the way, well, we're on this topic, Lauren, are you holding any grudges? Are you a little upset with some people, Lauren? And I had to go, you know what? I am. There are some people and some places and some things that, you know, I'm still having some feelings about because I felt like some things that were not proper happened to me. And he went, yeah, I totally get that. But I'm going to need you to release that because that's taking up room in your spirit, right? I need you to love yourself. I need you to see yourself how I see you. Because if you can do that, you will idolize a manifestation or a breakthrough. You won't idolize, right? Obsess over what may have happened to you from other people that maybe was wrong or wasn't fair, right? You'll be able to love yourself like I love you. You'll be able to see yourself the way I see you. And then you'll be able to extend that compassion and that forgiveness to other people, just as I have extended compassion and forgiveness and unconditional love and understanding to you. And I went, okay okay i see what's happening and these are things that i knew these are things that i knew a long time ago but i had to go a little bit wonky around the bend in order to come back to center and once i did that i'll tell you something i've been having a great couple weeks we've i've been kicking it with jesus we've been hanging out me and god we're having a good time we're prepping sunday services like we're having a really good time and things have actually really picked up for me like Things are going a lot better. I feel better. I feel good. I feel, I feel clear headed. I don't have any resentments or like grudges against any people. Like, like, you know, peace be with you. Like, it's all cool, man. Like, and you know, I'm much closer in actuality to a lot of my manifestations now than I was a few months ago. And it's because of that pivot. It's because I had to remember not to idolize and obsess over a manifestation, not to take other people's lessons and teachings more than what my creator is giving me personally for me, that's going to work for me, that I had to heal my heart a little bit and just kind of slip back into the the intimacy of a fellowship with God, right? Again, it's the, it's the simplest advice and it's the and I'm my life is proof right in this moment that 
it, it is the most effective. If you actually do want to manifest your blessings and your purpose and your promises into your life, it is the most effective way to do it is just to hang out with God, just to hang out with God, enjoy, enjoy his company. You know what I mean? Just release attachments and resentments to other people and forgive them as God forgives us and like keep it moving, like live in the moment, you know? Be gentle with yourself. It's the simplest advice. It works so much better. I've been so blessed like the past few weeks just kind of making this pivot in perspective. But this very simple advice, again, it's not one that you're going to find in the blueprint. It's not one that you're going to find in someone's nine step course. And it's the easiest to forget, right? Because it's the hardest to keep. It's hard to forgive people, especially when they have wronged you. It's hard to remember to spend quality time with God when you're in a world that's constantly trying to distract you, right? Even in the spiritual community, just keeping you on a hamster wheel. Are you in alignment? Did you do your shadow work? Did you manifest? What your baby leaves at? What do you do? Like, it's a simplest advice. Love God above all things. Love people. Worship nothing in this world. And see what happens. See what happens. So, sometimes I pull cards um, during Sunday service, but, you know, honestly, I don't feel like we need them this week. I have a deck out, but I don't feel like we need cards this week, so I'm not going to use them. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to flow with the spirit today. But this is what I have for you. It's, a, it's an interesting little dissection of, of this message, right? Just from, like, nine lines. But it really, like, it really kind of, like, blew my mind this week. So I hope that you guys enjoyed this. I hope that this was helpful for you. Um, we're a little bit longer this week than last week, but so be it. Be it on to us, Lord. Uh, but I hope that this allowed you to feel seen in your process. I hope this supported you. I hope that this, if this message resonated for you, I hope it connected some dots. Um, and I, I really pray that this Sunday service, it serves you well. It, it helps you create a pivot in your perspective and in your personal practice that allows you to come into greater fellowship with God, a greater wellness in your spirit. And I do hope that that will bring your blessings and your manifestations closer to you. I really do. I believe in God. We can have our cake and eat it too. So I love you guys very much. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your Sunday and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.